grab some water and some tea. I anticipate us being here for about, I'll probably share for about 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll answer some questions and have some dialogue. All right, now in about 10 seconds, you're going to hear me go live on Facebook. Please don't mind me. I'm gonna make sure we get them squared away and then we'll dive in. All right, so we're gonna have a blast tonight. Hey fam, welcome. Welcome. For those of you who are viewing this via Facebook, it's so good to see you. For those of you who are viewing this via YouTube, it's incredible to hang out with you tonight. To my David Burris Academy family, it is good to hang out with you tonight. Uh, and to those who are listening in and leaning in via Clubhouse, it is an absolute pleasure to hang out with you tonight. Uh, do me a huge favor. This is a free complimentary masterclass. And so that means we want to invite people into the room. You do not have to have paid to participate. And so what I want you to do is if you're on Clubhouse, I want you to ping some people. Let them know we're having a brilliant conversation. If you are on Facebook, I want you to like, comment, and make sure you're sharing this. Uh, we we want to we want to get as many people in the room as possible. Again, we're live on Facebook, we're live on Clubhouse, and we're live on YouTube. And so I'm having a conversation with all three at the same time. Uh, and so you may ref you may hear me refer to Facebook at some point. You may hear me refer to Clubhouse at some point. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to share for about 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and then I'm going to end it on Facebook and we're going to answer some questions on, on Clubhouse. All right. So we'll, we'll end it on Facebook and then we'll answer questions on Clubhouse. If you are on Facebook and you have an iPhone uh, or an Apple device, rather, why don't you come hang out with us on Clubhouse so you can take advantage of this uh, conversation. Elizabeth, good to see you in the room, fam. Um, all right. So let's dive in. Guys, I want to pray before we start because I want to make sure that our hearts are right and ready to receive um, what I believe God's given us tonight to equip you. Uh, fellas, we're going to learn a little bit more about ourselves. You're going to find out, sir, that you're not crazy. Ladies, you're going to discover that there's a reason why he does the things that he does. Uh, and so we're going, we're going to, we're going to learn some things tonight that perhaps you already know it's going to be converse, conver, confirmation, or you're going to learn some things that you didn't know. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this amazing conversation. Uh, God, I'm excited about this vast group of brilliant minds that I get to hang out with on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Clubhouse. 
um, in this Heart of a Man pop-up masterclass. God, I pray that you would meet us tonight and uh, just give us clarity and understanding. And we honor you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Facebook fam, I see you. Benjamin, thank you for sharing this, bro. Andre, good to see you, man. Um, so let's dive in, guys. Again, if you have not already, I want you to grab a notebook, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen. I'm going to share with you seven, seven common fears or seven things men fear in relationships. And I believe that this is going to help you. Now, my objective today, again, is to help ladies better understand men and why we do the things we do. It's to help fellas better understand themselves and understand, sir, you're not crazy. And I want to put some framework around why it is that we as men do what we do, uh, just so we can better understand. And, and so that we can, and even more so navigate these, these thoughts, ideas, and feelings. All right. So let's dive in. I'm talking seven things men fear in relationships. Uh, again, one last time, if you haven't already, you want to take some notes tonight. Um, cause I, I think this will help you last. And one last thing, if you haven't pinged somebody in clubhouse, please do. If you have not invited somebody on Facebook, please do share this with as many people as you can. All right, let's dive in. So seven things men fear in relationships. Um, there are a wide array of things. Um, but these are just seven things that I thought I would highlight tonight and center our conversation around number one, Write it down. Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. If you ever wonder why it feels like men are challenged with this commitment piece and locking in and 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 um, really committing to a, a solid relationship, it's because in many cases we're afraid. Now this is this is bad. It doesn't sound good, but you got to know. You, I've got to be honest with you. In many cases, we are afraid that someone better is going to come along. Now I know that's it's tough to hear. It's a challenge to hear, but men often fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Now let me say this for for those of you who have dealt with men who would not commit. And for who even all intents and purposes uh, decided they couldn't move forward with you in the relationship, ladies, you want to send him a thank you card uh, because he didn't drag you through the mud, um, pretending that he had what it took to make the relationship happen. Um, right. And so one of the things that I want you to hear and understand is men often, not all men. Let me preface it by saying that this is not all men. All right. I'm not speaking for every man. I'm speaking for some men. In many cases, some men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. And so because we fear that someone else and for the immature man, that something else is going to come along, something that's better, something that's bigger, more shapely, right? W whatever the more is, um, he, he at times won't commit. All right. Um, and so number one, and these are not in any particular order, but I'm, I'm going to give them to you just as I have them outlined here. Number one, men often fear commitment. Men often fear commitment. Again, tonight, I'm going to share with you seven very key reasons why men are challenged in their, in their ability to commit. I see my brothers have stepped in the room. I see Pastor Pete is here. I see Raheem is here. Uh, fellas, it's good to see you. Um, again, I'm going to be calling on some of you men uh, later in our Q&A session in, in, in Clubhouse because I want to kind of unpack some of this stuff uh, and bring some clarity. All right. Number one, men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. I'm talking seven fears men often face in relationships. Number one, men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. If you have not already pinged somebody in Clubhouse, please do. If you have not already tagged somebody on Facebook, share this, host a watch party, please do. We're having a brilliant conversation. Number one, men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. All right. Number two, I want you to, I want you to write this down. Men 
often fear confronting their feelings and emotions. Men, if you ever wonder why men are challenged in their ability to go deep with you, um, it is a challenge because men often fear confronting their feelings and their emotions. And here's why. And I explained this the other night. I was on a clubhouse and um, I, I gave this analogy for us. Often, men, it feels like when, when we become, when we're vulnerable, when we are transparent, um, in many cases, it's almost like being on a blind date with yourself. And I don't know if you if you've ever been on a blind date, but it's it's almost like I don't even know if I'm going to like the person I'm sitting across the table to, uh, across the table from. And so, in many cases, men are challenged in our ability to become vulnerable because it's like being on a blind date with ourselves. We at times feel like if we do become vulnerable, I don't know if I'm going to like the man I see on the other side of the tears, on the other side of the vulnerability or the other side of the transparency. And, and, and um, if I were to dive just a little bit deeper, uh, again, I gave this analogy the other day, but I, I, think it, I, think it makes, I think it makes things more clear when I share this. Um, men have been taught how to win with our bodies. We've been taught how to win with our bodies. Men are also taught that you are to be the defenders of your community, of your family, and especially of yourself. A man's job, he a man feels most like a man when he knows he can defend himself, right? So even an on, oncoming attack, he feels like he can defend himself. Now, if we talk about vulnerability, if we talk about transparency, um, those words, really, if you talk about being vulnerable, it means open, it means capable or susceptible to attack. To be vulnerable means capable or susceptible to attack. I want you to think about that. We as men have been taught how to be the defenders. So we've been taught not to let anybody attack us. The problem is that you want me to be vulnerable, but you haven't taught me how to defend myself with my heart. The much deeper problem is that I cannot defend myself with you when I feel like you are attacking me. I can't defend myself with you the same way I would defend myself with a man. Does that make sense? If, if this were a man attacking me, I can choke him, I can stab him, I can shoot him, I can fight him, I can slap him, I can kill him, I can do whatever I want to do to defend myself. But with you, ma'am, it feels like you're offending me. It feels like you're attacking me, but I haven't been taught how to how, I haven't been taught how to respond with my heart. Does this make sense? And so if you want me to be vulnerable, you're gonna to have to be patient with me. Because to be vulnerable means to be open to attack, and I am not built to take attack and not defend. All right. So men fear confronting their feelings and emotions because we don't know how to defend ourselves emotionally, but also because we don't know who we're going to meet on the other side of the attack. Not attack. On the other side of the emotion or feeling. What's interesting. I said attack and I didn't mean attack. But what's interesting is that when you when you when it feels like you're coming at me emotionally, it almost feels like you're attacking me because I'm not equipped to defend or respond. Does this make sense? And so it's a challenge for me as a man. It's a challenge in many cases. for us. This is not all men. This is some men. It's a challenge for us to open ourselves and be vulnerable because we haven't been taught how to defend our how to cover, guard, defend, and respond emotionally, all right? Number one, men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. We fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Number two, men fear confronting their feelings and emotions. Men fear confronting their feelings and their emotions. That's interesting. Number three, I want you to write this down. Men fear being misunderstood when communicating. We, we, one of the reasons why we shut down, one of the reasons why we don't talk, one of the reasons why you want us to have a conversation with you, but we don't want to converse, and especially when it comes to the emotional piece, when it comes to our feelings, is because we fear being misunderstood in communication. You have been, and you all know this, ladies, you have been talking since you came out of the womb. 
you have been emoting, you have been conversing, you have been expressive, you have been, you have shared your emotions openly. You have been playing house for years. So you know how Ken and Barbie are supposed to communicate. Whereas we as men have not been playing house for years. We have not been taught how to emote. We've been taught that the cry is a sissy and boys don't cry, right? So all of this stuff has challenged us. And so now when it comes time to communicate, we're often, let me tell you something about men. Men are very much achievement driven. We don't like doing things that we feel like we can lose at. And so communication is one of those things where we don't feel at times, this is not all men, again, this is some men, we at times don't feel like we are equipped to communicate effectively. And so as a result, we will shut down because this is not a, this is not a, if I don't feel like I can win, and when I say win, I don't mean out talk you, I mean be heard and understood. If I don't feel like I can win in this conversation, I will shut down. The other problem is I feel like when we do express ourselves, we feel like when we do express ourselves, you take our words. A friend of mine, good friend of mine, Terrence, uh, he said it best. He said, Dave, men don't have the, we don't get a chance to have uh, rough draft thoughts. We can't have rough draft th thoughts. In other words, we can't have a thought that we change or we can't say a word. We can't express a word because whenever we speak, you hold our word as law. And so it's a challenge for us to speak at times because whatever we say, you're going to hold us to it. And we don't like failing you. We don't like missing the mark. We don't like being men of our words. And so sometimes we don't talk because we don't want to say anything we don't mean. We also don't talk because we don't want our words used against us in the future as evidence in your argument, right? And so we will shut down. We will not emote. We will not express. Uh, and so we fear being misunderstood in communication. We fear that when we say something, you're going to misunderstand what we mean. You're going to misunderstand what, we, what we've said. Uh, you're going to misunderstand um, the process whereby we're trying to emote and express, all right? Um, so number one, I hope you're writing these down. If you're not already, <laughs> Um, if you're not already, I want you to grab a notebook, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, and uh, you want to take copious notes. Uh, for those of you who are on Facebook, there will always be a troll. Uh, so whoever Mr. Um, Duane, uh, David Wayne Four is, please ignore him. There will always be a troll. So don't mind the trolls. Don't share your cash app with anybody. We're not sharing cash app today. Uh, and I don't have I don't have time to block the troll or else I would. Uh, for those of you who are on Clubhouse, I hope this stuff is making sense. If you don't have a notebook, grab a pen, grab a paper, grab a notebook. You're going to want to take notes on this stuff. Um, I think it will help you and enrich your life. What was number one? Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. What was number two? Men fear confronting their feelings and emotions. What was number three? Men fear being misunderstood when we communicate. Tonight, I'm sharing with you seven fears men commonly feel in relationships. Number one was we fear making the wrong commitment decisions, which is why we don't commit at times. Number two, we fear confronting our feelings, which is why at times we're silent. Number three, we fear being misunderstood, which is why at times we don't communicate, don't express, don't emote, because our words are so permanent and it's hard to take back what we've said. And so we we keep our words to ourselves. All right. Um, number four, number four, write it down. Men fear being disrespected. We fear it. We fear it. A man's manhood is hinged on his ability to be respected, right? A man's manhood is hinged on his ability to be respected. Now, remember, I told you earlier that at times, we, we can't defend ourselves against you the same way we can defend ourselves with, with, against a man. And so it's a challenge for us when we feel disrespected, right? Um, when, when, you, when we're talking and you stand and stand up over us, or when you raise your voice, when your voice gets elevated, uh, it becomes a challenge for us. And this is why we shut down in many cases, uh, because we haven't been taught how to defend our hearts. Remember, we, I told you that earlier. And so when you raise your voice at me, when you stand up, when you're talking, 
um, it, it makes it makes us feel a little bit disrespected. Your tone, sometimes your choice of words, is it feels disrespectful. Now we know you don't mean it that way, but it feels in the moment disrespectful, and a man fears being disrespected. Um, and so, and because he doesn't, um, he doesn't have it, in many cases the tools to handle the disrespect. He doesn't have the tools to handle the disrespect. Um, and so, and he can't defend himself the way he would with somebody else. See, when he's talking to a man and a man stands up, he can stand up. Uh, when a man raises his voice, well, he can raise his voice, right? But if we do that, it becomes abusive. It becomes, uh, it, it can get dangerous. And so what we as men try to do is we try to maintain and maintain, maintain our composure. But when you speak, speak, speak to us in a certain tone, uh, when you use certain words, when you when you are a certain type of expressive, right? So when you kind of standing up over us, those types of things cause us to feel disrespected. Again, we know that you're just passionate about what you're saying. We know that you just you just mean what you say. But for us, it feels like disrespect. And so one of the things men fear in relationships is disrespect because we haven't been taught how to respond to disrespect in a way that allows you to maintain yourself as a lady, uh, but also in a way that we can feel like men. Does that make sense? Um, again, this is not all men. That's the first thing I want you to hear. Number two, um, I'm sharing some things that I'm not, that I don't necessarily agree that we should do as men. I'm just sharing with you so that you'll know. All right. Uh, we're going to pause for a second here. Uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, just give me a moment. I want to reset the room in Clubhouse. Uh, for those of you who are leaning in tonight, this is a Heart of a Man pop-up masterclass, uh, uh, Clubhouse family. Um, we are dealing with seven, uh, seven, seven fears men commonly feel in relationships. Uh, seven fears. Uh, I'm going to pause also here for a second just to plug. If you're not a member of the David Burris Academy, Man, you're missing out. We teach this type of stuff every week, twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays. When I say we, I mean I. Uh, I am equipping unmarried men and women for success in marriage. Um, I want to make sure that you get this thing right. If you're not a member of the Academy and you would like to join the Academy, I would like to, I'm going to give you a complimentary gift at the end of this, uh, this meeting today. Uh, so if you are not a member of the Academy, I have a complimentary gift for you. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what the gift is. I want to give you 30 days for free in the academy, uh, 30 days for free in the academy. Um, and so I'll tell you how to do that at the end of this uh, conversation uh, and we'll move forward. All right. Uh, also, if you're on Clubhouse, we're going to answer some questions at the end of this. And so I don't want you to miss out on that. All right. We're having a brilliant conversation tonight. I hope that this is challenging you. I hope it's stretching you. I hope it's making you aware of some things, gentlemen, that you knew about yourself but didn't know how to articulate. And I also hope, ladies, you're starting to better understand who we as men are. Clubhouse family, if you have not pinged somebody already, invite them to come hang out with us. Ping a friend. Let them know we're having a conversation uh, and you're better understanding how men think. Uh, Facebook family, please tag somebody. Tag your brother. Tag your girlfriend. Share this. Let them know we're having a brilliant conversation. All right? We're talking seven things men commonly fear in relationships. Uh, again, this is not all men. This is some men, right? So I'm not speaking for the collective. I'm speaking for those of us who have experienced this. Uh, let me recap. Number one is men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Number two, men fear confronting their feelings and emotions, and partly because we haven't been taught how to do that. Second, it's because we don't know if we're going to like who we are on the other side of our vulnerability. Number three, men fear being misunderstood when communicating. We fear that you're going to take our words and use them against us, or we fear that you're going to hear one thing, uh, but also, but really hear what you want to hear. We also fear that we cannot take back what we've said, and you're going to hold us to it. And so sometimes we shut down because we don't want to say the wrong things. Number four, men fear being disrespected, right? Because we cannot defend ourselves. We haven't been taught how to defend with our heart. We've only been taught how to defend with our hands. And so when you disrespect us, we know we cannot choke you. We cannot slap you. We cannot punch you. We cannot slam you. 
We cannot stab you. We cannot shoot you. We cannot choke you out. And so we shut down because we haven't learned how to defend ourselves with our heart. All right. Now, let's, I'm going to give you these last three, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A on Clubhouse. The last three, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A on Clubhouse. All right. You still have time to tag somebody. Um, let them know that, hey, yo, I see you, fam. Let them know that we are uh, having a brilliant, brilliant conversation. All right. Number five, write it down. Men fear losing their identity and freedom. One of the reasons men are challenged in committing in relationships is we fear that we're going to lose our identity and our freedom to the relationship. In other words, we fear that you um, that you or the relationship will cause us to lose our friends, lose our fun, and lose our freedom. All right. Again, it's not right, and I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm certainly not justifying it, but I'm letting you know. One of the reasons why we fear commitment, and I'm also giving you some blues clues, right, ladies, because what this will help you better understand is, let me, if that's the case, see, what I'm giving you is seven, seven conversation pieces, right? So now you can go back and say, hey, I want to ask you a question. Is one of the reasons why we haven't moved forward, and I just want to ask you, is, it, is it, are you afraid you're going to lose yourself to this relationship? Um, you I want to give you now how men think at times so that you can go back and have these conversations. Men fear losing their identity and freedom to the relationship. We fear that three things are going to be lost, our friends, our fun, and the freedom we have. And to a certain extent, um, our friends and freedom are questionable, right? To a certain extent, when we do become committed in a relationship, and especially when we become married, um, our friends, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to maybe scale it back on how much we hang out, um, even change our circle because some of our friends aren't gonna be able to handle the married us. Some of them are gonna want, gonna want to pull me back to the single me, and so I've got to be careful with my friendships, and I've also be careful with the fact that I have a lot of freedom right now in my state of being unmarried, and so men often fear losing their freedom to the relationship, right? When they, when, you know, guys trips. I can't just take the guy's trip like I wanted to before, or maybe I can, but I have to now go through. There's a system whereby I make these decisions. I don't just make decisions for myself. Um, I may not be able to hang out and play golf like I used to. I may not be able to go to the bar, whatever it is that we used to. And so we fear that our friendships, our fun, and our freedom are going to be in jeopardy if we make a commitment to you, All right? Um, and so that's something that we, we just fear that. If you've ever wondered why men don't commit, one of the reasons is we just fear that we're going to lose a part of ourselves to the relationship. Now, let me just say this. You are supposed to, fellas, let me lean in here. You are, you cannot, and especially when it comes to marriage, you cannot marry someone and not lose a portion of yourself. In fact, you know, my stance is, and I'm a Bible guy, I love the Bible, I love Jesus, and the Bible says that, and the two become one. I spoke to this earlier in a conversation I was having uh, with a brother and sister of mine. And um, just to get, give you just a sidetrack, just a little bit here, when two people become married, it's no longer the two, the two become one. You literally create a new person when you become married. The Bible calls you one flesh. So it's no longer David and Tanisha. Tanisha's my wife, I'm David. When we became married, we became the Burrises. We are now one person. And so to a certain extent, I had to lose me and she had to lose her to gain us. Whenever you get married, you're going to have to lose a portion of yourself to gain the us that will become us. So, um, fellas, you have a right to fear losing yourself. And let me also say this. If you're not ready to do that, you're not ready for marriage. And that's OK. That's OK. Um, one of the mistakes I made, early mistakes in marriage, and I'm really just coming out of this, is I, I was still holding on to the oneness, not singleness, just the oneness. And so I would, you know, I would do things like I would buy a car and wouldn't consult with my wife, or I would make decision, financial decisions and wouldn't consult with my wife. And I, I really had to learn how to become one with her. And that means I include her in the process. That means I can't make decisions just because I want to make the decision. All right. 
Uh, and so, fellas, to a certain extent and certain degree, you will have to lose yourself. You will have to lose yourself if you're going to gain her. All right. Um, and so, again, it's OK if that's not where you are. Be honest with that. But, ladies, I wanted you to hear that, that men fear losing their identity and their freedom uh, to the relationship. All right. Um, that was number five. Number six, write it down. I'm only going to give you seven tonight. I'm not going to hold you too long. Um, I'll be finished in about, give me 10 more minutes. Uh, Facebook will end it in 10 minutes. If you have the ability, come hang out with us on Clubhouse because I'm going to answer some questions on Clubhouse. All right. Uh, number five, men fear losing their identity and freedom. We, we don't want to lose our friends or fun and our freedom to the relationship. And we fear that we will do that. All right. Number six, write it down. Men fear. This is a, now a, a lot of a lot of fellows aren't going to admit this, um, but I, I got to say it. Men often fear not being enough. We fear not being enough. We fear the inability to keep up with the needs and the demands of the relationship. We just fear like we're not going to be enough. Right. It's an insecurity that we often fear. Not all men. Again. So, fellas, I don't want you to jump, jump, jump down my throat. I'm not I'm not saying it's you. Uh, I'm just saying many of us, we fear not being enough. And and to a certain extent, that fear keeps us from making the commitment because we feel like we're not going to be enough for you. Right. We fear like we won't have what it takes to make the relationship happen on our to hold up our end of the bargain of the relationship. And that's partly because we have not been properly equipped for relationships, right? We just haven't been properly equipped for relationships. And so we're challenged in that we don't know how to approach this thing. We're hoping we have what it takes to make it happen. Uh, we're praying we have what it takes to make it happen. But for all intents and purposes, we are confident in, the, in our ability to keep this thing going. And so we fear our inability to make this relationship thing happen. And so sometimes we bow out, we stall, we halt because we don't know, we don't know if we have what it takes. All right. Um, now you can, you can even assure him and he will still, and that's partly because men, real men take their manhood seriously. We take our responsibilities seriously. Right. And so you can affirm him as much as you want to. He has to know it for himself uh, because we take this thing seriously. And I'm talking about real men. When we get into something, we want to make sure, seasoned men, we want to make sure that we have what it takes. The Bible tells us to count the cost to see if we have what it takes to finish the thing that we've started. Right. And so men, if we don't do anything else, we count the cost. Sometimes we count too much, but we do count the cost. All right. Uh, number five was men fear losing their identity and freedom to the relationship. Number six is men fear not being enough. We quite simply, we fear not being enough. We fear not being enough. Number seven, I just want to lean into this one and then uh, we will, I'll recap. I'll give you all seven again uh, and then we will end it. Um, number one, number, number seven, I'm going to lean in here. Fellas, and we got, we have to admit this men fear loss. We fear loss, L-O-S-S. -S. We, we fear loss. Um, again, I said it before, men are very much achievement driven, right? Now, again, and I said this also, I'm speaking generally. I'm not speaking for all men. I'm speaking for quite a few men. We fear loss. We don't like losing, right? One of the reasons we we fight getting close is because we haven't been taught how to lose, right? We haven't been taught how to lose. See, loss is directly linked to vulnerability and transparency. It's directly linked to our emotion. We haven't been taught how to emote. We haven't been taught how to be emotional. We haven't taught how to cry. And so as a result, we don't want to deal with loss. Let me put this on the table. That is one of the reasons why he ghosts that's one of the reasons why men ghost in relationship. Sometimes we ghost in relationship because we don't do loss well. When I say ghost, if you don't know what that means, just disappear without calling, without texting, without any conversation. We just bounce. One of the reasons why we ghost is because we don't do loss well, because we don't do emotion well, 
because we don't do crying well, because we don't do vulnerability well. And so we know that on the other side of me letting you know that this isn't working for me, there will be tears. You may cry them, I may cry, <laughs> right? Um, and so because we don't do that well, we, 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 we disappear. Men fear loss. And so that is one of the reasons that keeps us from really getting close and connected to people. Other men, other women, sometimes even family members, we fear loss. We don't like to lose. We don't like to lose in sports. We don't like to lose at work. We don't like to lose people. We don't like to lose things that are close to us. And so because we fear loss, we don't get close. We don't do vulnerability. We don't do transparency. All right? Does that make sense? Men fear loss. Let me recap these seven guys and then my Facebook family. I'm going to share with you how you can take advantage of a free month in the academy. I just want to make sure that you're doing relationships right. Uh, so let me recap these and I'll share with you how to do that. Um, number one, men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Uh, number two, men fear confronting their feelings and emotions. Men fear fronting their confeeling, confeelings. I just made up a word and I do that frequently. Men fear confronting their feelings and emotions. Number three, men fear being misunderstood when we're communicating. We fear being misunderstood when we're communicating. Number four, men fear being disrespected. Men fear being disrespected. Men fear being disrespected. Number five, men fear losing their identity and freedom. We fear confeelings. You hear that? We fear losing our identity and freedom to the relationship. Number six, men fear not being enough. Men fear not being enough. Number seven, men fear loss. We fear loss. All right. Let me give you those really quickly again. Men fear making the wrong commitment decisions. Men fear confronting their feelings. Number three, men fear being misunderstood. Number four, men fear being disrespected. Number five, men fear losing their identity and freedom to the relationship. Number six, men fear not being hurt, not being enough, rather. Number seven, men fear loss. Men fear loss. Uh, what we're going to do now, family, is uh, we're going to open it up for questions. Now, I'm only going to open it up for questions on Clubhouse. If you're in our Facebook family and you have an Apple device, come hang out with us on Clubhouse. Um, if you are on Facebook and you will, you say, Dave, I need you to coach me and I'm willing to invest $47 a month to make sure I understand marriage I understand relationships and I'm not making the same relational decisions again. Facebook family, if that is you, I want you to inbox me today. I want to give you one month free of the David Burris Academy. One month free, but I need you to inbox me. Um, I will respond immediately after I finish on Clubhouse. All right. So I'm going to give you one complimentary month. After the first month, you'll be charged $47 if you don't unsubscribe. We have classes every Monday night and Wednesday night that I teach. We upload e upload. I'm making up words tonight. We upload e courses every Monday. So a new course uploads Monday. We discuss those courses in class on Mondays and Wednesdays, um, and it's just been brilliant. Every first Friday, starting in March, um, we're doing what's called the first Friday huddle, where I'm going to teach you how to operate in business, how to ex how to make more money. <laughs> how to how to maximize your gifts. So there are so many things that we do in the academy. Kimberly, I see you, fam. So inbox me, uh, Facebook family. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. We do a live webinar every month. So I want you to look out for next month's live webinar. I think I'm going to continue on the series of this manhood piece because um, I'm going to help you understand men. All right. So I'm going to end it here. Again, inbox me right now if you want a free month in the academy. And I'll send you a link to do that and we will move forward. DBA family, I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.